So we've talked about IP addresses a little bit. We talked about DHCP scopes. We talked a little bit about ping, the ping command, and a little bit of me ranting about uh, help switches and, and things that are or are not current. But I want to talk deeper about what an IP address is and what comes along with it. So you have your TCP IP stack that comes along with your IP address, but you also need to know that there are ports ports to an IP address. And normally, port 80 is your website. And port 443 is your HTTPS, your secure website. But there are 65,535 ports available. Most of the ones you're going to need to care about are not a true, it's not a trivial amount. Uh, ports on an IP address, right? So how do ports work? There's lots of descriptions on how ports work, 65,535. But there's well-known ports that you're going to need to have an understanding of. And if you're going to take some certification tests, you're going to need to memorize them. Each one of these ports is really like a window. They are or a door, right? If you if you numbered your front door, front front door, front door, I can type, I swear, was one, and the back door was two, garage door was three, and then you started numbering your windows, right? Like if it was you if you were gonna be like a drive-through window, right? Front window is four and side window is five and upstairs window is six like we can keep going especially if you have a lot of windows and doors in your house or your property but as you go down these things each thing is a num numeric value and in this case the website is on door 80. that's really all a port is it's a default choice of communication so if you were going to do a remote desktop connection to another machine remote desktop is where you can remote control a computer kind of like we were remote controlling the VMS or the sandbox earlier um, remote desktop operates on port 3389 so that's effectively door number 3389 every form of communication has a port assigned to it. It does a specific method and a specific call, and those are all in your well-known ports. There's a lot of those things you can find. Let's see, uh, what's a well-known port number? Here's a Network Encyclopedia, and they go through all the well-known port numbers that exist. They talk about the you know, TCP three-way handshakes, which we're not gonna get into at this point. They talk about all of the common numbers. The common numbers are 0 through 1023. You don't really need to memorize all 1023 ports for most tests, but you're going to have some basics, right? Your port 80 for HTTP, SNM, SMTP, which is email traffic, uh, SN, SMTP, which is simple network. Uh, sorry, SNMP, simple network management protocol. I was not working on it. DNS, which is the resolution between IP addresses and other things. And then here's DHCP, which is on port 60. We were talking DHCP earlier. File transfer protocol. All of these things have their own typical dedicated port. You can still go to a website that's on, not on port 80. You can still do DHCP that's not on port 67. You can have DNS not running on port 53. But everybody involved needs to know that that change has happened. You can do anything on any port. It's typically, uh, with some exceptions, uh, you, but you have to make sure it's configured differently everywhere. So for example, uh, running a port on 3389 for remote desktop, might you might wanna say, I wanna hide it. I don't wanna have, be obvious that I'm running remote desktop on port 3389 because port 3389 is the default port for remote desktop. So I'm gonna move it to port 5001. Well, you have to do that on the server that's hosting the remote desktop computer 
and the computer that's connecting to it. You have to do both. So that's part of the challenge uh, in by not following whatever the defaults are in the commonly well-known ports is that you need to have the understanding on how to change it both on the server side and on the client side and you better document that you made that change and where you made that change and how to make that change because somebody else might not like that you made that change uh, security through obscurity is the concept of like having your remote desktop on a on a weird port that's not normal but the protocol or the language that's going across that port doesn't change. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is still what you're gonna go and use regardless of what port it's on, whether it's port 80, port 200, port 4040. There's a lot of websites out there on port 8080, um, which is usually a configuration website for a lot of networking equipment. You can, you can go talk to those things, but you're still using HTTP, so you can still be discovered using HTTP, and remote desktop uses RDP protocol, uh, which it doesn't matter what port you move it to, you still have to use RDP protocol because that's the way it's configured. If you weren't using RDP protocol, maybe you're using X11 or some other remote control protocol, that's fine, but everybody has to be configured knowing what the protocols are and that's why security through obscurity can sometimes lead to problems. So I just wanna talk a little bit more about IPs. We went through some of that. We've talked a little bit about ports, giving you some really general knowledge and kind of say, hey, you know, like understanding each port is its own address and each address is kind of its own thing. So if we were had a, uh, just as a final, if this computer was hosting something and somebody needed to access it on port 5000, it would look something like this. You'd have a colon, and then there would be 5,000 there. Uh, and that would be the address that they put in, typically in whatever tools they're using. Those tools could be a web page. It could be a program called PuTTY, uh, which is a terminal emulator. Uh, it could be, there's a bunch of things that you could put in there. But IP addresses are really, really, really important. And then we will talk about DNS next.